Hi guys, it's Lynn and I am doing a collab with some of my friends from Geeks and Beauties. Today is October 10th, which is National Mental Health Awareness Day. We are all talking about specific mental health illnesses that either we have suffered from or someone we love have, has suffered from. Um, there is a tag that the organizer, um, Hafina has gone ahead and created and shared with us to go ahead and help us organize our thoughts. So I think that I'm going to use that tag only because it's a very sensitive and emotional subject and it's easier for me to just answer questions. So I hope that somebody finds this helpful, somebody can relate to this, and um, it's rather cathartic for me as well, so I hope you can bear with me. So without further ado, let's go ahead and answer those tag questions, shall we? So today I'm going to be talking specifically about postpartum depression, not because it's the only mental health um, illness or issue I have come up against or across in my life by any stretch of the imagination. It's just one that has been um, something I've dealt with after both of my pregnancies and something I've found not a lot of people really understand, including myself, and not a lot of people really take into account. Um, it's not talked about very much. It seems like something that's swept under the rug, very hush-hush, and so I wanted to go ahead and share my experience with it. So without further ado, I'm going to look on my phone. I apologize. Number one, what is your mental health issue? I'm going to be talking about postpartum depression, um, specifically mine. <laughs> um, I don't think I can speak to anybody else's experience, so that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Do you have medication and or therapy? I took and am taking medication for mild to moderate depression and I have been in counseling. Um, we've also, not specifically because of that, but we've been to family counseling as well because of some acting out because of one of my children and, you know, it all feeds in. If one person or two people are unhappy, it definitely feeds through to the whole family. So I count that all kind of as one big thing. What therapy or medication have you tried and has any worked for you? I think it, that's one of the things that is just, it's a journey and I wouldn't say anything has worked specifically well. I would say things have not worked and we've eliminated those things. Um, one of the biggest parts of postpartum depression sometimes is it just unfortunately takes time for your body and your mind to heal. Um, and they really don't know why it happens the way it happens. Um, a lot of it is very, very well educated guesswork. How long have you had problems for with this particular issue? Um, since my firstborn, probably, and he's five. Describe your mental health issue in five words. It's like walking through mud, would be my answer to that question. Um, I don't think I have to elaborate for people who kind of understand depression and just unhappiness in general. Your family and friends know. Um, my close family, my husband knows. Um, I, I don't think anybody else is really concerned one way or the other, I guess. I don't know. Does this affect your work and daily living? Of course. Of course. Um, your mental health, your mental state affects everything, every part of your life. I mean, don't let anybody tell you that it doesn't. You, you know, how you're feeling and how you feel about yourself and how you look at yourself absolutely um, affects how you interact with the rest of the world and how they interact with you. So of course, um, being sad or depressed or having bad feelings or feeling bad about yourself or feeling inadequate, all of those things can affect you on a daily basis, absolutely. Do you do in a crisis? Um, I have anti-anxiety medicine that doesn't really work, so I don't actually take that usually. Um, I rely on my husband or, you know, I have a friend who I can get out of the house with or, you know, I can just take some alone time and rest and kind of recuperate. Um, but mostly, I just, I deal with it. I'm an adult, so <laughs> that's what I do, I guess. I don't know. I, I try not to make a crisis happen. What advice would you give to others suffering? Tell people. Tell your doctor. Talk to whoever you can. Find a support group. Um, 
a lot of times, you know, postpartum depression manifests in a lot of ways. Mine was just feeling bad about yourself and feeling that you were inadequate and feeling that you weren't a good parent, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of postpartum depression can be much more harmful and much more dangerous. So I would highly recommend, you know, doing whatever it is that you need to do to get yourself helped. Um, find some type of support system, whatever that is, whether it be, you know, in person, online, anything, anything you can do to get yourself help, do it. It's the hardest part of living with a mental illness. I think the hardest part of living with a mental illness is that the rest of the world has to go on. I mean, it doesn't, it's not something like a broken arm or a leg or, you know, a fever or a flu that you can take a specified amount of time and recover from. You kind of have to recover on the go. You kind of have to recover as you go. And for people that have chronic mental illness and, you know, mental illness that is never expected to change, then, then what are they supposed to do? How are they supposed to get better and feel better and, you know, become themselves again? I mean, how do they even know what that looks like? I, I mean, and with postpartum depression, once you've felt that way for years on end, you know, I had a kid and then a couple of years later had another kid. So it's kind of like you're, you're down in the dumps for years and years. I mean, how do you even know what that looks like anymore? It's difficult. It's difficult. And nothing's going to slow down and give you that time you need. You just kind of have to do it. So that, I think, would be the most difficult part. What is something that surprised you about your illness or recovery? Um, I guess just something that surprised me is that there's not, there's not just a specific amount of time or specific amount or a specific treatment that you can do to make yourself better. It's just, it's also up in the air. It's also gray there's no black and white of do this this and this and you'll feel better it's just let's throw some drugs at you and see what happens you know and that is terrifying <laughs> it is terrifying and it is humbling to realize how much um how much science still has to figure out especially when there has been so much that we have learned about our bodies and ourselves and our brains and there's just so much more to go there's one false assumption about your disorder that you wish to correct. Um, I guess I would like to say that not everybody who has postpartum depression is a danger to themselves or to their children. Um, I never harmed my child. I never harmed myself. I never neglected my children. Um, I, you know, one thing I specifically tried to do is reach out for help when I needed it, when I needed it. And I'm very lucky to, for the most part, have had babysitting help have had a very supportive spouse. Um, you know, I, I realize not everybody has all of those things, but um, you, you know, a lot of people can be amazing parents. A lot of women can be amazing mothers and still have postpartum depression. It is another misconception is that it's not that common. It's very, very common. A lot of people suffer from it in one way or another to one degree or another. And it's something that it shouldn't be something you're ashamed of. It's something that you need to get help for and that you need to reach out to other people about and that you need to feel okay to talk about because otherwise you're just going to implode. And that's not good for anybody. Uh, what makes you feel calm? Uh, what makes me feel calm? Uh, reading a book. Um, my dogs uh, sitting on my lap is something that really, really calms me down. Um, um, cuddling with my kids. <laughs> Ironically, I mean, they're, they're the best thing that ever happened to me. Ever, ever, ever. So, they drive me nuts and calm me down. <laughs> Go figure, right? What makes me smile? Um, my children say I love you. <laughs> that just, it warms my heart. Or when they accomplish something, or when I help them accomplish something. Um, being a part of the family, being well and happy enough to be a part of the family, being physically and emotionally capable of being part of the family. And when I say physically, it's because I was falsely diagnosed at one point and put on medications that literally gave me such bad headaches that I could not move. Um, 
for like a six month period straight I could barely get out of bed off the couch. I was in so much pain so um, I went through that journey as well. So being well enough to get up and go out and interact and get down on the floor and play with them is a gift and a blessing and it makes me smile every day. So um, thank you for listening to my ramblings and I hope that um, you will check out this tag if you've had any mental health issues or if you know anybody that does I'm dealing with some mental health issues in you know with people close to me right now and I am having a hard time with it one thing I do want to say is that if you are dealing with somebody who does have a mental health issue um, if you're having a hard time and if you're taking it personally, please try not to take it personally. Um, a lot of the times, it's about them. It's not about you. Uh, and that's something that I had to learn to be really careful of on my down days, is to not snap and just say ugly things. Um, because the last thing you want to do is push somebody who loves you away from you. So if, if somebody is struggling, really examine if they're being mean just for the sake of being mean or hurtful or if they're just in so much pain that they're lashing out and maybe see if you're strong enough to be a support system for them. I'm not saying, you know, get walked all over just because, but sometimes you never know. You never know what you can do to make somebody's day a little bit brighter. Believe me, you'd, you'd be surprised. Um, Anyway, thank you for listening to me rant and ramble. Again, as always, I do appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next one. And thank you so much, Hafina, for organizing this. You're lovely, and um, please do go watch all of the other videos. Take care, guys. Bye.